I don't know if you've ever come across a blade that you were like, there's no reason I should like this knife, but I love this knife. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Welcome to another episode here at Gideon's Tactical. Today, this video is all about that. And particularly when we're talking about the Boker Lancer. Now I saw this on a whim. It's been in my uh, shopping cart at Blade HQ for probably, I don't know, six months and you know i'm like yeah maybe i'll get around to buying it and just one day i was it was on a whim i was like let's just do it let's get it i don't know you know it's lightweight it's kind of different let's try it out and guys i love this knife and it's funny because this knife doesn't necessarily do anything better than any other knife there's just some really cool aspects to the lancer design that are just really connecting with me it's different it's fun and depending on where you pick it up, it's rather inexpensive. I picked this up for $40 over at Blade HQ. I'm going to have links over to them as well as to Amazon. They do have a couple different color combinations, carbon fiber, a couple steel options. So 40 is like the low end, 65 is pretty normal. And then they even have like a higher end version as well. So there's lots of options out there for you to consider. But this Lancer just has something about it. Again, it's, it's like... I don't know, it's like your favorite car, and it's like, why do you like that car? Uh, you know, one, one of my favorite cars for some reason, I owned it for several years, it was the most reliable vehicle I ever owned was the Subaru Loyale. It was like the Outback before the Outback, basically. Uh, I had like a 91, you know, it was a push button four wheel drive, 1.8 liter, it got like 30 miles of the gallon, the four wheel drive was awesome, and I paid like $800 for it, and I sold it for 1600, you know, several years later, uh, after putting about 60,000 miles on it. And it, it's ugly, it's really low power, there's nothing great about it. It was very low budget, you know, no specialty, anything, but I just love that car. And in the same way, not that this is low budget or anything, but there's just nothing super special about the Lancer, but there's just something super cool about the Lancer. So let's go ahead and break this knife down, show you why it's just so interesting and why I like it. And I think it's a really cool blade. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, we got some deployment lockup, cool things to look at. And this being my very first front flipper and we're going to get to that in just a second we'll look at the eye hole here first oval eye hole very easy to purchase without even flicking my wrist this guy's just going to fly open no problem there good detent though you know it's not wanting to just whip open on me so it's got a good detent but very easy for me to purchase that eye hole flip that sucker open it is completely blocked on the left hand side this is not a lefty friendly knife the pocket clip is not rotatable and the eyelet is not lined up for that now, this is what's really cool is that this little hump here, which you could do as a lefty, is a front flipper. And it's really fun. It's my very first one. And I've seen some guys be able to use like their index finger and whip it open. I have large size hands and I can't do it. So I just use the side of my thumb here and I just rock it open. Boom, without even flicking my wrist, I can get that guy to just fly right open. Lots of fun there. Really cool, little bit different concept. Again, you just grab that little hump that's sticking out, rock your thumb over, and you're good to go. Really cool. Really, really cool. Really like that aspect a lot. Just different from your average flippers that you know from Kershaw and every other brand other sun. I think it's like a European thing, kind of. Um, so that's really interesting to see that. Uh, and, and it's cool. Now this rides on Teflon bushings, so it's not the smoothest um, in the sense of uh, sound. I can hear it. I don't know if you can hear it, it's kind of like a <sighs> But it's not gritty at all or anything like that. In fact, it's very smooth in actual deployment. I like the smoothness. I can't really tell compared to like a bronze bushed, you know, rat model one or something like that. Uh, it is Teflon though, so it's just not quite, you know, as high end as say something that has bronze bushings. That would have been nice to see. Now it does have a nice little stop bar right back here. Good, good lockup for a little light duty knife. And that come, brings us to the lockup itself being a liner lock that is a titanium liner lock. Super cool. And again, just another little unique different thing. And this is just a, a G10 body with a little liner lock of titanium that's actually screwed in and mounted right back here underneath the pocket clip. So that's pretty cool. Now it's gonna hit about 40% of the blade. So nothing really to worry or complain about there. Easy to disengage and close the blade like that. And then Again, whip it open, no problem. Uh, it is a very thin, you know, liner lock. Uh, the Skyline, which we'll be talking about in concept here in a little bit, is about the same, maybe slightly thicker. So it's a light duty lockup. I mean, this thing is not supposed to be rock solid. That's not the way it's designed. You know, you're not gonna be out there, you know, taking this on a hike or, you know, 
using it as a tactical blade. This is a light duty gentleman EDC and the liner lock attributes to that, but it's solid. You know, it's not gonna wobble, it's not gonna play around on you. And it's a good solid simple lock up for a simple, you know, like light duty type of knife that you may be looking for. Finally, the centering is slightly to the side. It's not rubbing as of yet from what I can tell. Uh, and I've been playing with it a bunch. Um, it's close though. So I can see just a hair bit of light. As long as it's not rubbing, you know, we're good. It's not perfect for the price of $40. It'd be fine. You know, if I paid 80 or a hundred dollars, I'd be kind of pissed, um, that it's not, you know, better centered, but for, um, what the design is, you know, it's absolutely doable as a little, you know, compact Chinese overseas produced light duty knife that I paid $40 for. Okay. We're going to hit the handle. Obviously it's as square as a brick. So, um, this is not the most ergonomic pocket knife you're ever going to hold in your life. What we're looking at is four point, four inches even, sorry, on the handle length. It's going to have a thickness with that flow through construction there of um, 0.41, so less than half an inch thick. It's going to come in at 2.4 ounces, so nice and lightweight. That's really nice to see. G10, there is a carbon fiber um, G10 mix, I think, option out there as well. This black G10, they do have a green G10 version as well. That will be more money that we'll talk about with price point here in just a little bit. Medium grit on the um, texturing of the G10, which is nice. It's not slick and it's not like, you know, cold steel tactical, which is great. Straight off, no guards, nothing to worry about there. Um, so this is just for light duty tasks again. I mean, it feels decent in the hand. This cutout, you kind of have to get used to because my middle finger kind of rides in there. And then I usually tend to put my index finger right there so I have the control, but you know, I have no guard or anything. There is a pretty decent ricasso right there. So it does give me a little bit of space, but again, you're not gonna be stabbing or, you know, trying to do some sort of tactical move or, you know, that type of thing with the knife. This is absolutely just EDC, quick cuts. You open this guy up, you're opening your lunch, you know, packaging, you're opening the latest, Amazon purchase, you're, you know, cutting packaging for a meal, just different stuff like that. You know, it's light duty, um, breaking down a couple cardboard boxes at work, that type of thing. And that's what it's designed for. It is somewhat clunky. It is somewhat square, not really causing any hot spots. This cutout is just kind of interesting and just something you kind of got to get used to. And I tend to, again, just use this. You can see that I got plenty of G10 left over. If I hold it up here, if I put my index finger in that cutout, I barely have enough G10. So you just kind of got to decide, is my middle finger going in that gap or is my index finger going in that gap? And then that will help you determine how to best hold the blade. So it's doable. It's a light duty EDC and that's all it's good for. Okay. So the pocket clip, as I alluded to a little earlier is righty only tip up only for me, I'm right-handed and I like tip up. So that's no problem. Rather deep ride, good little loop over, you know, it's only going to be coming up just ever so slightly out of your pocket. So that's good again for slacks and, you know, more of a, office environment, that type of thing, just light duty around town. You do have a nice little lanyard hole that you could absolutely get 550 paracord for, through. You got some standoffs. This is a titanium pocket clip matching that titanium liner. So, you know, they definitely put a little effort into this and giving it that kind of matching, you know, design and matching color is pretty cool. A little bit of a flare, so it'll catch your pocket. And this is grippy. I mean, when you put it in there, the, the te texture on G10 is medium, but I mean, there's a lot of pocket clip attached to the body there. You're not going to lose it. So that's really nice. In fact, you're going to, Sometimes like if I wear basketball shorts, it really, I got to tug and pull my whole basketball shorts up while I'm pulling it out. So um, that is something to consider. But yeah, it's a, it's a very doable, very good, particularly for again, those like slacks, gentlemen, you know, feel, suit, you know, feel uh, the pocket clip actually absolutely accentuates that. All right, blade time. Three inch blade. You're probably looking about with that Ricasso, 2.75, 2.8 actual cutting edge. We have a saber or flat grind here. Good, decent belly with a good straight portion right here. We have that kind of acid worn wash, like that aspect a lot. Really massive drop into basically a spear point with a very minor swedge there for aesthetics. Good strong tip, but still somewhat precise. So it's kind of giving you the best of both worlds there. I like that. And then the maximum thickness back here of 0 0.1. Uh, so less than an eighth of an inch thick and then tapering down rather quickly there. And a pretty high, like two thirds high saber grind, one third flat, which is great. No, no complaints there. Made with 440C steel and it is a Chinese knife. Now the relief edge was insane. This came stupid, stupid sharp out of the box. I was really happy about that. 
Um, what I've found, I've used Boker knives in the past. I've used some of their 440C. It's definitely better than like 8CR13 MOV. Um, I would say it's on par with like good OS 8 from like Cold Steel or SOG uh, or um, like lower end US, um, what's the word I'm looking for? 440C. It's definitely better than like 440A. It's better than like Chinese, um, what is it? 7 CRs, you know, that you're going to find. I would argue that I get better edge retention out of like 420 high carbon from most, you know, um, like Gerber or uh, Buck. It does give you a better edge retention out of that. It's a little, I found that um, Boker's tends to be a little gummy when you're resharpening it. So it just takes a little bit longer than I would prefer, but it holds that edge really well. You know, I mean, for $40, you're getting really good edge retention for the price point and what else is out there on the market. Again, on par or even somewhat surpassing most good SOG or Cold Steel OS 8s that are out there um, with that 440C. It's not a super steel. It's very rust resistant though. So if you are in high humid environments, this is a great steel to have on your blade. Um, and you know, it's very decent and it's pretty easy to work with out in the field. It's pretty easy to tune up, you know, particularly because they've already given you a good relief edge. You're not gonna have to do any sort of reprofiling or anything like that. And you know, it's a good slicer. It's not some full flat grind, you know, VG10 um, Delica, but it's good. I mean, it, it the saber grind is decent and it has a thinner blade, which is great. You know, if it had been a quarter inch, I would have been a little, or not quarter, sorry, eighth of an inch that would have hindered some of the cutting, but it absolutely slices, dices, and gets the job done for your basic EDC task, which is exactly what you want, particularly with a good relief edge. And this Lancer is doing that. So um, it's a saber. It's, it's very on par with a lot of EDC knives that you're gonna find out there. Now, it may not compare quite with the Kershaw Skyline, and we're gonna transition right now into competitive options and price point. And uh, I wanna thank you guys for always using the hyperlinks to Blade HQ and Amazon. It means so much to me, guys. Uh, you help support the channel. When you purchase through the Blade HQ and Amazon links, it helps me to then get out there and purchase gear. Because I bought this guy for $40 is what this is going for with this. Uh, this is a, the Blade HQ exclusive. Regularly on Amazon and Blade HQ, the normal ones, which would be like there's a green version and then there's a black version. I don't know what the difference is really between them. Uh, those are going to be $65. And then there is an S30V, I believe, version with the carbon fiber, which is like $80. So... For 40 bucks, I think it's a great bargain if you're kind of looking for something a little bit different. Uh, for 65, there's a lot on the market I would pick before it. It's more of a novelty at that point is $65. So links in the description below, Amazon, uh, Blade HQ, if you're interested in the knife, those are places that you can look at. And I found that Blade HQ has the cheapest at $40. And I would, unless this is just like mind-blowingly connecting with you, or you've had a chance to play with one and now you know you want it really, really bad. 65 is on the very steep end and it would not be my first choice. There's a lot of other knives that just have other features. Now there's really cool features with just the design. The front flipper is totally addicting. But again, as an example here, this Skyline, now this is a Damascus steel version that Blade HQ may have. So you might wanna look into that. They do batches and runs um, of it. You might be able to find it on Amazon as well, links below. Um, this guy is going to be about the same weight, you know, two and a half ounces, basically. We got G10, very similar. Got a way deeper cutout, more natural grip. I did an aftermarket loop over titanium handle or a pocket clip there that I picked up on eBay. You know, liner lock, but you're going to get bronze bushings. You got that flipper, but the blade is a little bit thinner. Just to show you here, I think it's like 0.9 maybe. Um, yeah. So a little bit thinner and it's got a hollow grind. So it's just going to be a better slicer. There's, it's just geometry. There's nothing you can really do about it. Well, folks, time to bring it to a close. You have to decide whether or not this does seem like something that would be different, cool, and unique, and something that might fit a niche for what you're looking for in your pocket knife collection and your EDC rotation. Or you look at it and you go, yeah, dude, I don't know what's wrong with you. I don't know why you would think it was cool. That's up to you, but I just wanted to share with you why it's connecting with me and why I think the Lancer is a pretty sweet little blade and something fun, particularly for those people. I have a couple people in mind who aren't really into pocket knives. They love dressing up. You know, they're always wearing like suits and stuff to work and, and that type of thing. I think this would be a great little gift item for them. So uh, it has a definitely gift potential as well because it's different, it's unique, it's slim, and it kind of stands out from the crowd and you're not going to 
bake, break the bank um, purchasing one for a gift as well. So guys, thank you so much for coming over here today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been entertaining. Please subscribe if you're not a current subscriber. Become part of the GT family. We're throwing up videos like this every single week. Uh, if you current subscribers rock, you're awesome. Thank you so much for your continued support here at the channel. Make sure you hit that bell icon so these videos show up in your newsfeed and come back weekly. You know, just check the, the homepage. Throwing up two to four videos every single week. Just depends on how many I can crank out any one time. And uh, check us out on all the relevant social media. That's a great way to see what's up and coming as well. Projects I'm working on. And finally, guys, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. I just like that little thing. I'll see you out there.